what's up guys thank you for tuning in to the studio i have an announcement the warrior guide is actually finished believe it or not it took some time but shit you know all things good comes with the weight this guide is going to be in a two-part series it's not that it has to be it's because i want it to be everything is not released and classic and uh, i would like to see more information before i actually commit to everything that, that i say is true but i did as much as i could with the knowledge that i have and i just want to say that i hope you enjoy it i enjoyed making it and from time to time i wanted to kill myself but you know that's how it is also make sure that all the people that i mentioned check them out follow them on whatever social media platform they're using there's a lot of people involved in the background they're really cool guys so you know give them a thumbs up and make sure to uh, i don't know the warrior master class a class resource by takenashi This guide has been possible to put together by the help of Laddie Rath from Salad Bakers and Mr. Prefax. But guys, we must always remember some of the legends who brought us all here. And that burning us down. About me. In retail, I played a priest, I played a druid, I played a warrior. I raided Nax up to four horsemen. And on private servers, for the last almost 10 years, Warrior Rank 13, well, I think I was the biggest meme on Nostarius at one point. Server got shut down before I reached 14, and yeah, we had some drama there, but it's all good. Clear Nax played on fastest clearing guild ever. Personal best is Sulguru, 17 minutes. And Gil's best is Nax. But currently, I think it's faster than one hour and eight minutes. But uh, yeah, you can check out Salad Bakers. And uh, they got their own Discord. And I think they'd be more than happy to share some info with you. Special thanks again to Laddie, Prefox, but also Omak, Steppenwolf, Caladriel, and Storfan for all the help with sheets and just general information to make sure that everything that i wanted to put in this guide was double and triple on quadruple checked Simon. Simon. so here is my social media you can follow me on twitch i'm not currently really active but that will change come classic launch instagram Twitter, Facebook is where I'm at. I'm pretty active on Discord. You can reach me there, whatever questions you might have. And I'm playing on World of Warcraft European servers, Takanashi. But I have to say that I tagged my name on the US servers just in case. So being a warrior for the last eight years going into classic wow from my old guild freak circus a shout out to you guys i love you guys that was an amazing time to infamous honestarius this is my legacy to the community showing the same love as i received from the game and the players i met the last one and a half decade enjoy sheets this is a good place where you can find some solid information. Steppenwolf, Taladril, Classic Wild.live discourse where there's a lot of ton of information. And of course, my friend, Serana the Rogue, who's going deep, deep, deep into the ranking and brackets and all that stuff on his Discord. Check him out. He's also live from time to time on Twitch. You get the information on his Discord don't be shy find these guys 
this guide was not made to work optimally on private servers so any comment or feedback stating shit like but the server i play on so on so on it's not really important we're waiting for the relaunch of the greatest game ever made even if you don't play retail fire up your subscription and show some love to blizzard add-ons there's a million add-ons out there and even if you want to use them all your interface would look like you know cowabunga so here's a couple of uh, nice add-ons that i like like swing timer it lets you monitor when your next auto hit will happen there's a lot of examples you can find out there but you know easy dismount even if you think it's uh, something that's uh, just automatically happens when you're doing stuff it doesn't easy dismount saves you a lot of time if you're starting a fight when you're mounted you don't have to dismount and then charge or whatever you're supposed to do this add-on lets you to automatically dismount and do your next ability without you macroing or whatever you need to do overpower alert it flicks a big thing on your screen that shows you that you're you're ready to use overpower uh, at this moment big wigs it's a raid boss timer and alert you know it's very customizable i like it but it's from taste to taste what you like there's a couple of other things out there as well called boss mods and whatever target assist easy clicking to raid mark targets if you don't know what that is it's the skull and cross and moon and whatever that you put on targets that you want to kill so you can easily tell your raid what they're supposed to do give out special specific uh, tasks to the different classes or people in a raid trinket menu trinket swapping and queuing them made easy if you think this does not sound like it's very important i promise you it is you can actually use the trinket and queue the next trinket that will pop in as soon as you go out of combat it's very easy gives you perspective and an overview of all your trinkets it's amazing dps meter if you want to be competitive you need to know how much damage you're doing and find out if you're doing something wrong this is a very nice way to track and give you kind of feedback on what you're currently doing aux you're a warrior you need all the money you can make aux lets you post auctions on the auction house very 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 easy item rack gear swapping made easy it's self-explanatory snowfall cast spells abilities when pressing a key down not when released if you don't know what i'm talking about the standard and the default is that when you're using an ability or a spell you don't actually use it when you press it down it does not happen until you release the key so pressing down activating it saves you that millisecond that you need to be the best since vanilla wow i've been getting my add-ons from curse gaming this is a direct link and is they made it very easy now so you can pretty much pick if you're playing retail or classic wow and they're implementing something from twitch as well so if you're on twitch you can actually automatically update your add-ons by a simple click perfect What is a macro? Well, in game, there's an option to write a sequence and adding it to a certain keyframe. The base concept of a macro is to perform more than one action at a time in order to easier accomplish a task 
or really for any reason. Nice macros to use. Start attack on every ability. This is very important for a warrior because you can't attack unless you have rage. Weapon swap, super nice. You're going from a two hander to a one hander and a shield or whatever else you feel convenient. This is a couple of examples of some macros that you can use. Like the one hand and the shield and cast shield bash example is super nice. Change your stance to berserker stance if you're not already, then cast intercept or pummel. Pummel is a interrupt ability and uh, intercept is of course your charge when in combat. All right, so we're moving on to key binds. Remember, it's all up to you and what feels comfortable in the way you play and move your hand fingers. There are more key binds than the ones I will show you, but these are the most important ones on potions, consumes, etc. as personal preference. The bigger the emergency, the faster I need to be able to hit that button. I use depending on PV or PvP, from 18 to 39 keybinds. Some of them count as two, and since I have three stances, I could count up to 48 keybinds. I have stance dancing on very easy buttons to hit. Whatever I'm doing and abilities, I would use instantly after changing stance on that same button and the next stance. Make sure you try out different keybinds and macros. There are many play styles on what will work for me might be a disaster for you. Here is a couple of examples on the macros and keybinds that I use. For example, if you look at the top left corner, you see racials, battle stands from any other stance, then overpower on the same button. That means that as soon as I see the overpower being activated, I can just spam that same button and then and eventually I will be able to use my overpower. So this means that if I need to do something fast, I'm faster pressing one button than actually pressing two buttons, right? I have charge on Q, and when I'm in uh, circus stance, it's uh, intercept. So I have the same kind of abilities on the same button in different stances. I have shield bash on the same button as I have pummel because one ability is not usable in circus stance so that's why everything that does the same thing on the same button in different stances that works for me uh, if you look at the bottom screen you see berserker rage and piercing howl and my mount and when I hold shift B I use uh, I pop uh, battle shot and you, you know you're thinking well mount and battle shot is like kind of two different things well you know if I'm in combat then I'm not able to use my mount so uh, you know whatever I do does not affect something and I don't do anything that could possibly wipe the raid Piercing Howl is a personal preference. I really, really, really like that talent. So if I'm dual wield uh, Fury or if I'm PvP spec, I will always have that. I don't know why. It's just me. And you see on my mouse that I use, I have the side buttons. This is used to switch to Burke Circus Stance. And on the same button, whirlwind. And uh, if I hold down shift, I throw a grenade. If I use the back button, I go defense stance. And on the same button, defense stance, I, you know, I uh, have a macro uh, on shift that I put one hand in the shield. And this is just me. This is what I like. And obviously, if you're looking at uh, the buttons like E, you see I have cleave. This is obviously when I'm using a two-hander. And uh, 
Shift E is uh, the heroic strike. But sometimes I just switch out cleave and I don't have heroic strike at all. But this is situational and depending on fight and whatever and what I'm doing, PV or PvP. So logic. I tried and failed what is most comfortable for me. But having things like hamstring, mortal strike, piercing hull, which are abilities and spells meant to be used while on the go. To have these in a position I can't hit with my fingers without lifting my hand or stop moving isn't anything less than specially gifted. Choosing the race. General and must know info. First of all, the warrior is the only class in World of Warcraft classic that every race on both factions can play. Let's face it, the warrior is meant to be played by a lot of people. The warrior is one of the classes that shines in both PvE and PvP. It's also a hybrid class. Since it's the go-to tank in vanilla, you have the option to switch roles in PvE, which is huge plus in vanilla. Since the time investment into any sort of class is huge. This role flexibility gives the raid a time saver being able to gear one person with multiple gear for role swapping on different fights. The leveling journey is one of the slowest and hardest. It's a huge commitment and time investment. Get ready for it and plan ahead. Here you see. The list, everybody has the choice to play the warrior. The warrior is the most expensive class to play. If you're aiming to min-max, expect to spend many hours preparing for raids, farming gold to not only buy consumables, but also buy and equip items which are best in slot for a long time and kind of required for you to buy if you're planning on being a warrior who tops the meter. But let's face it, why wouldn't you? As stated, warriors have an easier learning curve and may be enjoyed pretty fast. But, and this is a big but, understand that this does not mean no skill required. The warrior is way more complex than you might think. Unlike most classes where you kind of have a recipe to follow, the warrior does not. The phrase, the more you know about the game, the better you will be able to form, is kind of used for every class and way too often, but never has it been more true than here and now. The warrior gives you a chance to excel, to push yourself as a DPS or tank and go from warrior to legend. We stand between death and glory, giving everyone a taste of victory. How you play a warrior can vary a lot depending on your environment. For the warrior to excel, your raid must enable you to play at the extent of your ability. The warrior and warlock are both great examples both these classes need high threat per second from the tank to be able to go full ham and not get gimped from how their mechanics works on threat this is why you often see mages and rogues being top damage dealers and lesser guilds while on the top guilds there will be warriors dominating fun fact when it comes to vanilla raiding history, the top guild was Horde, right? Everyone remembers Nihilium and Curse and all those cool guilds. The top 10 guilds, however, only three were Horde and seven played on the Alliance. A fun fact, six guilds were European and four played on the US servers. Top 50, 24 European and 26 US. 
So if you ask me, it's very balanced on the two, and it will be interesting to see if this remains a fact from Classic WoW. This is a list, clearing next Ramos, order sorted by date of killing kill itself. PvE and PvP for the Alliance. Best in slot in PvE, as you all know, is human. But remember that this perk also helps you being a tank. Second place, Night Elf tank, Dwarf tank. And third place is gnome because gnomes have no perk. The night elves has the dodge increase, and dwarves has the racials, which can help. And also, the night elves has the nature res in for AQ, and dwarves has the frost resistance, which is good for the next runs. PvP, without a doubt. Best in slot is the little friendly gnome. Second place is the dwarf and human. But the sexiest is the night elf. The night elf. You can see the racials here. The shadow meld is pretty convenient when you're leveling and you want to take a break and you just run behind a tree and shadow meld and whatever but it it really shines for rogues and druids and uh, also hunters being able to shadow meld and have a cat that can stealth with them so not really a super perk for a warrior but still you know humans you have the reputation gain extra spirit when you're leveling you have the sword specialization and the mace specialization which is which is the only reason why humans are the best in pve without a doubt you can see uh stealthed units or players uh, for 20 seconds it has three minute cooldown i don't know how well it will work in classic but it was not that great in uh Protosaurs, dwarfs. They had a stone skin, stone form, which is pretty OP against the rogues and stuff like that. Hunters, you know. But uh, other than that, uh, nothing other than what I just explained with the frost resistance. Gnomes has escape artists, which is the reason they are absolutely best in slot for PvP. Mages hunt, hate you, and whatever class or you know that can uh, immobilize you is just you know this is what makes gnomes so annoying, and also being really small, annoying to target. <laughs> Horde PVE best in slot, orc DPS without a doubt. Torum tank because of the increased health pool and uh, it's going to be interesting to see but as far as I know it seems like Torum might have an extra edge on reach right second place the troll third place the undead you might think that oh you know undeads have uh, have the advantage of breaking fear but uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's not that amazing, and the uh, trolls also have special abilities, which uh, gives them certain advantages on threat. And but yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see. But this is uh, this is what I f this is what I feel. And PvP, without a doubt, the orc. There's nothing that even comes close to the orc warrior on the horde side. Being able to break or resist stuns. Second place, undead, obviously, because being able to break fear is amazing in uh, 
in PvP against uh, so many classes that can be pretty annoying. And uh, last place, troll. The work has the blood fury, which is really nice for PV, and also you have axe specialization, which pretty much gives the orc the same edge as humans have on the uh, alliance side. This is the reason why uh, orcs run around with axes. They are crazy. They have hardiness, which is the sick part about the PvP thing, which gives you uh, 25 percent additional stun resist additional they say that the base stun resist is five percent in classic that means that they have 30 percent base and then they can spec into it for another 15 percent meaning that orcs has almost 50 percent stun resist chance this is sick. Torrin with the War Stomp. Increased health pool. Herbalism. Who cares? Nature resistance is okay. Troll with the Berserk King. There's been a lot of theory crafting about this on DPS sheets. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in Classic WoW. Increased damage dealt against beasts which is really nice but how many beasts do we fight throwing with the bow specialization this is uh, nice unfortunately uh, there's not many best in slot bows in the game willows forsaken provides immunity to strong fear and sleep really cool it only has a two minute cooldown which is pretty op cannibalize this will save you a lot of gold because it has uh, so much uh, usefulness when you're leveling and also the underwater breeding uh, 300 percent longer than normal there's some quests that you do that this would be really nice for you and you know you don't have to go up and down all the time shadow resist cool 10 percent nice against shadow priests and warlocks and whatever the pros and the cons as a warrior number one dps and tank class in vanilla there's nobody that can argue with this it's a fact unlimited potential pvp wrecking ball unstoppable the with a pocket healer or healers what do i mean by this well the thing is that the warrior works like no other class in the game we have no energy that we you know have to regain we don't have mana that means that the warrior instead gets our rage which is our resource to use abilities and spells the more we get hit and the more damage we deal the more we can do so potentially a great warrior with one healer can wreck a whole group of people i love it the warrior has every weapon in the game without the wands at your disposal can you imagine having a bank filled with fucking crazy weapons shiny very high skill cap this might scare people but i say this is what lets a great warrior stand out never forget never let them forget your name rage instead of mana what i talked about build momentum and utilize it so we talked about the pros it's time for the cons slow leveling oh yeah low mobility mm-hmm most expensive class to play if min maxing 
Oh, oh my god, yeah. Depending on consumables, raids will PvP. That means that to shine, your warrior has to use all the consumables and all the buffs you can get. This is what makes the warrior the DPS in the game. If ranking, there's a few spots considering how many warriors that are out there that want to get 14 or whatever. So we don't actually know how many slots there will be, but some premates use three, some use one. If there's going to be one slot for every warrior, it's going to be a hard time reaching rank 14. Leveling. There's so much to cover regarding leveling that if I was supposed to make a guide or cover everything, this would be like a 200 page guide. And there's so many other guys out there that actually does this better than me. So I provided you with a link. You can check this out. This is uh, actually a cool guide where you can pick if you're playing solo, duo, or trio, and also what class, I mean, what race, and of course, what faction. And uh, it's very, very dynamic. Check it out, classicwild.live leveling. And uh, they also have a list of weapon progression and a general warrior specific guide made by Cargos. So check those out. Join the many Discord communities for great tips. Links are down in the information on YouTube. Professions. This is a huge part of the game for you to make easy money and help you as much as you possibly can. So understanding it is very nice. We can split them up in different sections. There's the main professions and then you have the secondary. And also the main professions I split up into three groups, which I call the gathering professions, the hybrid professions and the crafting professions. What do I mean by gathering? Well, it's self-explanatory. These professions only require you to pick up and gather materials, nothing else. Hybrid, the fun part about this is that you kind of get the material through the profession to skill the profession even further. And also, you just get the items you need to skill the profession through drops or killing stuff from, with the tailing. Crafting profession, also self-explanatory. You craft things which skills and increases the expertise of your level in the profession. What to pick? Are you min-maxing PvE or PvP? Whatever you have, you need to have engineering. There's no choice. I don't care if you want to be a warrior. Engineering is the key. Gold. Having professions that are crafting professions generally cost you gold and gathering professions earn gold. Gathering. You have the herbalism, and mining and skinning. And theoretically, these are the biggest money making machines because no investment, only income except auction house fee and very high demand. You have the herbalism. So I split these up into four different levels like difficulty, personal use, time commitment to skill, and gold maker. So the herbalism is not very hard. It takes a lot of time to skill because you physically have to run around in the world collecting these plants. Personal use, not very much unless you're a rogue. And you say, well, you use herbs in alchemy, 
Well, yeah, of course. But then you have to be an alchemist. So the personal use is very small. Less your role. Gold maker. Super high. This is a big thing with herbalism. You can make potentially incredible amounts of gold. Gathering the mining profession. Difficulty. Not that hard. Same with the herbs. Personal use. Not that much. Time. Very time consuming to skill because you also have to run around in the world and the goal making is potentially very high once you hit those last uh, skills of of mining you can you can get thorium and you can get arcane uh, crystals you you start to see large sums and chunks of gold entering your wallet skinning difficulty it's probably one of the easiest professions in the game the skill personal use not that much time is remarkably not heavy since you're doing it at the same time as you're killing mobs it's uh, super efficient goal making it's okay not that much unless you count certain items in the game that uh, requires like devil soul leather and stuff this uh, this is a nice way to make gold and also like skinning onyxia and other special mobs in the game that uh, you need certain things from the hybrid profession enchanting and tailoring Crafting non-dependent on other professions either supports itself or mats gather from drops. Enchanting. Difficulty. It's fairly difficult because not only does it take a long time and very, very material heavy to skill up, but also the the trainers are spread across the world and uh, like uh, one trainer is in Uldaman and you have to go inside and you know it's not that easy if you want to skill all the way you probably have to go back a couple of times and yeah personal use it's absolutely one of the best professions for personal use since every warrior needs enchants and as a warrior you need a lot of gear pve gear pvp gear tanking gear aoe gear you name it you have it you have lots of weapons you need to enchant that shit all the time and bugging someone to always enchant your stuff will you know potentially be one of the most frustrating things because and also if you're an enchanter you can always disenchant stuff that you don't use anymore getting material and being able to save those uh, for your next gear upgrade then you can enchant it time it takes a lot of time to enchant because it's like you have to enchant one item and then you have to press it again and it's gonna ask you do you really want to use blah 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 and you have to press yes it's frustrating it's annoying it takes a lot of time and also you have to get the materials to do it which um, it takes a lot of time to disenchant so yeah i would say time consuming but gold making potential is huge everyone needs enchanting through the whole game from the start to the finish people are going to use these mats and it's always going to be uh, sought after on the auction house you don't have to pay auction house fees like other things you're selling which is amazing i love it the tailoring difficulty to skill 
yeah it uh, it requires a lot from you and the same thing it takes a long time to craft certain things uh, crazy materials crazy things you need to gather and uh, some of them have long cooldowns etc etc personal use yeah you can use a lot of things you have uh, cool shirts i mean everyone needs a purple red shirt right and then you have the bags which you need through the game you can sell bags you can use them yourself you can have them if you're an enchanter you have special bags you have special bags for herbs etc it's very nice nice for a warrior maybe not but i'm nice for a warrior maybe not but i'm trying to see this for every perspective every person uh, this profession guide is not warrior specific even if i wish it was but yeah gathering professions engineering difficulty not really most of the things you need to skill up engineering is super cheap super easy to just press craft everything and it just crafts like 50 of them in a row you can go to get some coffee take a break whatever right easy personal use wow the potential of engineering is the best in the game nothing is more fun nothing helps a warrior more nothing is cooler nothing is more memorable you have so many crazy gadgets and bombs and grenades and you name it engineering i love it time eh, it's okay you know you're depending on others to you know sell shit on the auction house but still it's not that it's super not super fast but i would say it's pretty fast gold making not that much you can sell some things uh, that maybe you're the only one that can craft you can make some gold potentially sell a little every week on auction house but i wouldn't say that engineering is a, a profession that's going to make you rich crafting blacksmithing difficulty pretty difficult right everyone knows that you're gonna pick a specialization probably in your blacksmithing and you have to go around the world you have to find all these things you have to get lots of material blah 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 and also it's super material heavy and i would say one of the most difficult uh, professions to craft to skill up in the game personal use yeah you have a lot of things that you can use especially as a warrior you have the uh, crafting things like knight uh, and uh, for the debuff and you have uh, other things and you have of course the sulfur's hammer and there's many things that you can uh, use blacksmithing for and i mean to craft uh, fire resistance gear and uh, and uh, frost resistance gear and also uh, nature resistance gear is uh, absolutely important so personal use is at the minimum at a you know average right time consuming oh yeah it takes a long time and the same like tailoring but i would say blacksmithing is probably even more time consuming and frustrating to craft or skill up right gold making yeah you can make some crazy amounts of gold if you have the right recipes uh, you get the lionheart helm recipe and other things sought after things like that which every warrior in a game probably should get you will make a lot of gold you have to stand and spam in in uh, orgrimmar or iron forge uh, selling these things because you will potentially sell much more than if you put them on the auction house but also if you're selling something for uh, one gold uh, the auction house fee is not that heavy 
but when you're selling things for maybe 500 gold or 300 gold you can see the the cut they take and you get pretty pissed off right leather working the difficulty is probably one of the easier you know on the crafting side i would say uh, personal use i mean not that much but but there's a couple of things that you can you can use uh, with the leather working uh, for every class time it takes some time but probably the fastest one of all the crafting professions it's uh pretty easy to skill certain things there's some crazy recipes but yeah pretty fast if you know what you're doing gold making yeah leather working is the same there's a lot of things that you sell all the time that there's always people that uh, in that needs and you know these things are in demand like uh, healing uh, cloaks and whatever like anixia devil sore things yeah definitely okay gold maker alchemy difficulty very easy to skill as a crafting profession personal use at the max what person doesn't use potions let me i don't know tell me please time yep pretty fast i would say same thing there you can just you know press craft 40 potions and go take a coffee break and whatever go making crazy everyone needs potions this means that every week whatever you put on the auction house will be sold unless you're you know you have crazy prices one thing that you're selling on monday could be one gold expensive and you're selling the same thing on thursday when it's ray day because everyone needs it it could cost 20 times as much be smart when you're an alchemist don't try to put four thousand of the same thing on the auction house you can make some gold to cover your own expenses every week don't be greedy make enough and make those gold all the time instead of try to fuck the market and just be an idiot the secondary professions the fishing the first aid the cooking fishing requires a fishing pole time consuming you have to run around all over the world and skill up just like herbalism but fishing is probably even more frustrating because you have to watch that thing when the fish bite wheel it in it's not a must but a nice gold maker if you ask me fishing first aid requires a lot of material but it's easy to level and i would say it's a must for every warrior cooking same thing requires a lot of material it's pretty easy to level it's not a must but everything can be you know purchased on the auction house but me as a warrior i just need to have every skill every profession at a max that's just how a warrior should work gold making supporting your warrior play the auction house Nothing can be easier than running from the mailbox to the auction house, reposting things. I won't teach you how. There are other guys explaining this, but using logic will be your greatest teacher. Experience is a huge key for a successful auction house player. Some things are 50 gold on one server and 100 gold on another. But there might be things that cost two gold that I explained earlier on Monday but 20 gold on Thursdays 
The auction house is the best, best place to become filthy rich, perhaps the only place. Farming. Solo. I will look into becoming a guild master and funnel all gold into my own pocket. In a group, find a healer and go farm Dire Mall East. If you guys have an enchanting and mining, disenchanting things you don't need. And if you have mining, there should be a number of rich thorium veins giving you some nice thorium and a chance of arcane crystals as well as gems. The chance of getting lucky and looting a forest companion dragon slaying book is big when you do this for a couple of days and will be a nice chunk of gold in your pocket. When you're farming Dire Mole, make sure you learn positions of the possible book spawns. These are going to be worth a lot of money. Multiple characters. More than one character. Having more than one gives you unique opportunities to earn gold. It will most likely be an investment at first, but the more time that pass, you will start earning and after a while, you will have great advantages on players with only one tune. You can cap these alts at 35 since that's when you can max out any professions. Level and alt. With an advantage in dungeon farming and similar skills, these are examples, or I will need another 30 pages. But Mage, Ae farming, Dire Molise, Soul Guru, Black Lotus farming, and Altered Valley when it's released. Rogues, stealth ability, herb picking, dungeons, caves, etc. World buffs, consumables. and other tricks. You have a lot of them. This is a list you can check out to see some of them. And uh, I'm not gonna talk about all of them because it's just too insane. And there's no reason. Instead, you can just pause and look at this guy whenever you want, right? How to get them. I explained how to get Songflower or Seven Maid. Resist Fire is a trick. And also you have, when Dire Maul was released, you have the Tribute one. I explain here how to do it in a very easy way. And what happens that rewards you once you are finished and done. More consumables that you want to have in your inventory as a warrior. Some of them are more convenient as a tank. Some is more directed to the DPS. And everything is a mix for a PvP warrior. There's a lot of them, I know. But this is what makes you a great warrior. One of the most fun things in the game is a quest that you complete. And once you're done... You can come back and buy something called Noggin Father Elixirs. It turns you into a skeleton or shrinks you or gives you slow fall. Some of these can stack, but also it's a strong consumable versus classes that can purge or dispel your buffs because it hides your other buffs. It's a must have for every gamer. Adding sharpening stones to your weapons. This is something that persists through death, which makes it a very nice investment as a warrior. Here I explain which stone to use on which weapon and when and why. The DPS warrior. Dealing damage. The fun part. As a melee class, knowing what you're about to do in a fight, whether it's PvE or PvP, is more crucial than for any other class in the game. This is because if you know what could happen, 
it will make you able to react much faster than if something happens and you're surprised constantly hitting something is the most important thing in some scenarios but staying alive is the absolute top priority Tony is dead don't be a Tony tip of the day rage usage never leave home without it no rage cripple warrior full rage bar your burst train a variety of builds exist for the warrior and here is some of them and uh, you can just click the link in the sheet enjoy one weaver's edge the rotation so here this is a di discussed thing when it actually shouldn't be it's like when you're dpsing your priority list is as above always execute but if you have more than 2k attack power your top priority should be bloodthirst then is whirlwind two-handed or one-handed dps cleave or heroic strike and hamstring of course for um Rage dumping, uh, fishing for uh, wind fury procs, etc. The mechanics of a warrior. Here, we'll let you understand how raising one stat will influence many, giving you value for your money. Strength. One strength equals two attack power and also. It increases the amount of damage that can be blocked. Stamina. One stamina gives you 10 health. Agility, which I consider the top uh, stat in the whole game for a warrior, gives you one ranged attack power and also plus 0.5% crit, which means 20 agility equals 1% crit. 20 agility also gives you 1% dodge. It also gives you armor. Uh, silently agility also increases DPS since it reaches critical percentage which increases the DPS or the damage per second. Spirit. Increase the rate of your health regen while out of combat. Intellect. Increases the rate you learn weapon skills. These are what I call the primary stats. The secondary stats. Those are hit rating, crit rating, attack power, dodge, block, parry, defense rating. Keeping it simple. Dodge, parry, block. There is a 60% cap on your total avoidance as far as I know at this point in time. Opponent's miss rate plus your dodge plus your parry plus your block. When this cap is, is reached, the excess avoidance is taken equally from dodge, parry, and block and not the opponent's miss rate. An example, avoidance rate should be 75. 5% is taken from dodge, parry, block. Hit rating. Hit cap is something needed to make sure your special or yellow hits don't miss the target. To fight popular belief, plus hit does not make your hit increase. Instead, it reduces the miss chance. Mindfuck. Required hit rating. Dual wielding has a default 19% penalty increased miss chance. Pre-patch 1.8, this penalty cannot be reduced. Player versus player, two hand and one hand and shield is 5%. 6% against classes that could be using plus defense increasing your miss chance. So dual wield is 24% in PvP, but yeah, who PvP is a dual wielding warrior. PvE 200, 9%. PvE dual wielding, 9%. This is so again for the for the yellows. We go for eight, but 
the hit cap is somewhere around 8.15, 8.20, meaning 9% hit will make sure you don't miss. And I'd rather stay above than below, unless you're sacrificing other things way too much. 27% for bosses on white hits. This is unattainable without compromising and falling behind and everything else. As far as I know, it's not attainable to reach 27% hit. Crit rating. Critical strike refers to 100% bonus physical damage, twice your normal damage that occurs as a result of an attack made with melee or ranged weapons. Increase crit equal increase DPS to a certain point since plus hit and plus crit works in synergy. Explain and show on spreadsheet later in this guide. Calculating crit for an example. You start with 100%, you withdraw the 27% miss if you're, let's say you're dual wielding. And then you have the 8% dodge, the 40% glance, and then you add your hit rating, which equals your crit cap versus level 63 bosses. Attack power. 14 attack power equals 1 damage per second. Weapon damage per second plus attack power divided by 14% times weapon speed with dual wheel spec. Armor. The only attribute that mitigates damage in the game that does not have any diminishing returns, meaning no matter how high your armor is, you still get benefits from raising it. The higher the value, the more percent of damage dealt to you will be mitigated. The following three attributes are the useful both as a tank warrior and as a PvP warrior. Dodge, block, parry. Glancing blows. Something that everyone is talking about and tend to make it sound very advanced, but they try to make it complicated since they probably don't fully understand it themselves. What is a glancing blow? Well, it's damage lost when attacking a mob, meaning there's no glancing blows in PvP because you're at the same level. The percentages are one level above you, zero, two levels, 25, Three levels above you, 40%, and four levels above you, 55 But you're not fighting anything in raids that's four levels above you, which is why we're ignoring that. So, glancing blows versus a plus three level opponent, weapon skill, and you can see the, the numbers here, which is why people want to have humans and orcs who have uh, increased weapon skill uh, as a ratio, right? And then you can also have weapons which gives you even uh, higher uh, weapon skill, which decreases the damage reduction, right? It does not remove the lost damage uh, when you're hitting or giving damage to a, to a mob, it only increases the damage you're doing, which is uh, pretty much flattening out the lost damage contra the, the gain damage, right? The reason it's powerful to have weapon skill is that you're increasing the damage you do, meaning that glancing blows are less annoying. Most people think that glancing blows get reduced when you increase weapon skill, same as plus hit should increase your hit chance, while in reality, it only reduces the chance to miss. Even if it might look as it's the same, it's not. It might have almost the same outcome, but it is separate things. Increased weapon skill, increased your damage done, and glancing blows are actually still the same, reducing your auto attacks or white hits by 40% on boss fights or three levels above you. 
and 55% on four levels above you. The tank. Depending on staying alive, some of the attributes are very important, but you need to realize that they may change as you and your guild progress through the game and the gear. So you have three different specs here. The deep protection spec, the impale protection spec, highly discussed. And then you have the fury tank spec, which is probably the third per second for most of you. Also, tallow drill has a very, very nice sheet. You can see it here as well. And uh, you can see all the gear in the game and he calculated points earned for different attributes so you can see what gear has the most value. Highest damage and threat abilities are prioritized and used in rage dumping when you are able to, depending on spec. If playing with shield slam, then use shield slam, revenge, sunder, heroic strike if excess rage, which is the priority list. And if you're playing Fury plot, then replace Shield Slam with Bloodthirst. Right? So Shield Slam, Bloodthirst, and Revenge have either a high threat or deal a lot of damage, which makes keeping them on cooldown top priority. And when tanking more than one mob, your rotation should be like below. Surviving. This is something that most people don't think about because you're too blind and you're always trying to get the highest defense you can. But the most important stats, not calculating RNG and magical damage, but it's hit points, meaning your health pool. And then you have armor. But my boyfriend told me I need defense. Well, that's true but not the only and certainly not in most cases. While looking into this, you'll find the only thing that's keeping you alive is the fact that you have health, right? Right. So we covered that this stat is the most viable and should be prioritized. On the right, you have uh, a number on uh, uh, how much resistance you have and how much percentage uh, you will resist of the incoming damage. So as you see, if you reach 300 resistance, then you will resist most of the damage. But on the other hand, if you have 300 in resistance, your threat per second will probably shift. Armor is the only thing that mitigates damage except armor is the only thing that mitigates damage except resistance potions, buffs, etc., and has no diminishing returns. Even a level one mob will eventually hit you. Just try it out. When testing armor versus hit points, we find out that raising HP will increase the worth of your armor quite fast. However, increasing armor raise your HP very slowly. To give you a fast lesson, magic damage, try to keep high HP as a prior, physical damage, high armor, and a mix of HP, dodge, defense is very important. Pre-Biz PvE gear. So, this is a uh, you know section where I have a couple of tips and personal preferences and like one of the most underrated and not talked about speed tips for warriors is that you need to play with friends and here are listed a couple of classes that will make it easier to get you from point A to point B the mage is an always welcome guest Handing out food and drinks to everyone, porting the party as close to the dungeon as possible, and being able to crowd control. They have strong damage and can assist 
if you should manage to pull more than one pack, which is very sexy. The priest. This is a class that can move powerful magic and diseases that the mobs use against you and your fellowship. Being able to resurrect an off heal, assisting if you have a druid healer, one of the most loved classes in the game to this day, never leave home without them. The Shami or Paladin. Such incredible classes. Both can tank if it would call for it, heal, and deal damage. Both can resurrect, remove poison, diseases, and have many, many tools in their kit. If they turn out bad, bubble heart for them. If you're not among friends, I will not bring other classes who will contest for your drops. Not to be an asshole, but I got places to see and people to do. Can't be asked to run a dungeon more than I need to. Here is a list of all the dungeons. I listed them in a specific order where I should. Uh, I think that you should go through first, like more than than Blackrock Depth, and also listed a lot of things that you can pick up uh, in these dungeons, which is uh, nice to have, and especially since I uh, said that you need to have engineering. This is in prime consideration and uh, all the things important is listed here. The DPS warrior. Here are some of the bind and equip items that you should probably have from the start there will be more items as the game progresses but at launch this is the things that we have that you need to get the warrior has a very hard time to get your hit rating up so the lionheart helm which has two percent increased hit chance is amazing it has lots of strength and it has 2% critical chance as well. The Devil Soul Gauntlets, amazing things. Not that much stamina, but same as the Lionheart Helm, they provide you with critical strike chance as well as increased hit rating. These three items are amazing. Get them crafted and equip them as fast as you can. The Arcanite Reaper. This plan to craft drops from Bannock Grimax in Low Black Rock Spire. It's uh, one of the most overpowered weapons in the game early on. And uh, if you're an orc, or if you see an orc, run for your life. This is a must have for every PvPer, but also if you're a DPS warrior and can't get any other good weapon, this is a nice start, especially on Horde, playing Two Hand of Fury or whatever. Amazing. The Thrash Blade. This is an okay thing to have, grants an extra attack on your next swing. Doesn't look like much, but it's okay. Myra Song, Quest Reward. One of the best uh, starting weapons as well. Uh, and also is uh, cool to have if you're planning on tanking, where it also is a nice weapon. The famous legendary Dal Rens from UBRS. Get prepared for many, many frustrating attempts to get these weapons. If uh, I'm farming these, I do it with friends because you don't want to potentially do this for 50 runs and still lose the roll when it actually drops. So get some friends, 
uh, reserve one of the swords maybe and uh, people will probably accept it or just be among guildies and if ever, there's like five people that needs it eventually it will be yours and everyone is happy here is a best list of the things you can get where you get them and the stats amazing tools they don't make you look like a sexy warrior at, at start but you know they are very very nice world drops the boots there's not many boots that are really nice for a warrior at start but these are one of them you have flurry axe which is a low level epic but um, uh, the extra attack uh, on the next swing chance is amazing and again uh, war especially for orcs and the uh, legendary gloves edge masters handguards uh must have for anyone not playing uh, human on the alliance side because uh, you need to get those uh, extra skills up to increase your damage they might be expensive on the auction house but they will be worth it being a non-orc or human this basically means like i just told you and uh, the the starting weapons that you should aim for is the Deathbringer Axe from Anixia and Brutality Blade from uh, Molten Core. Unfortunately, Brutality Blade can be like you know never dropping, but let's let's uh, cross our fingers. The tank. Clever usage of spells and abilities. The recognition of a truly great tank. You have an arsenal of tools. Use them wisely. Offensive. Get threat on a jump and don't cripple your raiders. Use rage potions, blood rage, sapling charges, grenades, whatever you can to get initial threat and just get every mob to attack you. Defensive. Know the fight. When are the spikes? Less healers focusing on you, etc. Be ready with a cooldown. Shield wall, armor potions, health stone, health pot, absorption potions, you, you know, you name it. Mobility and supporting. Uh, very, very underrated uh, tools are example like the intercept. Uh, when, when I see a uh, a friend in uh, in trouble this is uh, a cool thing to have just to stand stance and intercept the mob attacking a friend and uh, try to get them off right you can taunt or uh, whatever and uh, this is a nice old shit button threat per second best in slot here it is I wrote down where you can get it. Some of them are uh, uh, early game. Some of them are uh, from Dire Mold. Uh, since that is not out uh, from the start, you also have uh, a separate list here with the links to uh, every item. So you can uh, you can check them all out also also something to, to say about the tank is that always try to think with reason you know if uh, you feel like you're not gaining threat put on some more uh, damage gear if you're dying too fast put on more HP and like like we talked about if the boss is doing dealing magic damage you need more hp if it's a hard hitting melee you know boss then of course you need more armor more defense gear so always try to think 
you have a lot of gear so you can switch around and be be clever the pvp warrior tips our general perception of who we're fighting in a ranking environment is wrong it's not horde versus alliance but instead alliance versus alliance and horde versus horde what do you mean takanashi well to elaborate we're pursuing a certain amount of honor within each faction and anyone that's attempting to gain more than me or my group is a threat and the real enemy the horde are just obstacles not really my competition with this in mind we have to dive into the whole ranking system with a mindset that we need to outsmart outplay be more efficient and just be creative in everything we do so how can we attack this well you can do a number of things either you talk to other rankers and try to set the rules on bracket caps this way you can control who gets the set amount of honor and make sure you're in a position which makes you happy you can put in more time than anyone else within your pre-made and kind of strong arm everyone and force them to follow your rules eventually and going back to example one be better than all other pre-mates and out for them take advantage of the weekend the only problem is that even if you're the best you will at some point be forced to farm for a lot of hours unless there are great pre-mates that breaks all other players on your faction which stop them from outfarming you by putting in more hours. Example one is probably the best for everyone except the player who can get into a great pre made. The ones who run the PvP scene on the server will most likely benefit the most, but a peaceful and diplomatic way to get the rank you desire is the most optimal for the general population in most groups. But most likely the least beneficial for casual players I have to say only reason I state this is because the casual player will probably not be in a position where they can either join a pre-made or have a say in anything which could break your spirit but as a warrior you should set your mind to put together a final party and start from there Thinking you can get carried to rank 14 is a very optimistic mindset and I would personally not enjoy micromanaging 14 other people in the Wrath ba Basin or 9 others in Warsaw Gulch and see them get the same rewards as me. I'm not asking for a medal, but I would encourage people to do their best to show support or if you're great at something, make sure you contribute or at least offer to. My choices look like this, or sometimes I can switch a couple of points, like Enrage, Improve Battle Shout, Deflection, Tactical Mastery, Anger Management. I'm not removing all the points in Tactical Mastery ever, but I mean, sometimes I feel like I don't need Anger Management and only have maybe three points in Tactical Mastery which gives me the ability put, to put them in different places always no matter what i have piercing howl in proved cleave because i play with a two-hander right and the piercing howl is just so fucking amazing uh, it, let's say i'm chasing a druid or whatever this you know hamstring and then he gets away, piercing howl, he gets slowed, I put hamstring, and yeah, it's, druids hate, hate that shit, and uh, you can use that piercing howl in many, many ways. When you're trying to cap a basin or at the basin, and you're at the graveyard, and you pop piercing howl, just spam it, and you slow everyone spawning at the graveyard, ooh, they're gonna love you. So, can vary depending on race and gear and uh, one versus one or BG builds is the 
axe specialization, last stand build, improved hamstring, and improved demo shaft. As your gear improves, the spec can change. A front running warrior that gets global won't do anyone any good, right? The Arcanite Reaper, again, amazing. Don't leave home without it. This uh, is uh, examples of potions that I always have. Uh, like limited vulnerability potions, invisibility potions for world PvP, uh, swiftness potion is crazy to catch someone is trying to run away or run away from someone, you know, if it's unbearable. But I mean, why do you want to run away? If you know you're gonna die, then fucking stand your ground. There's no reason to run away, and you know the Romans had a saying: if they found people that died from a sword in their back that meant that they were cowards major healing potion free action potion this is a warrior's dream wet dream living action potions which uh, hits the game a little bit later but yeah good to keep in mind the pvp gear right aim for survival without gimping dps a nice weapon will make a difference Remember that you'll act as a meat wolf from time to time. Have different gear and swap around. Use different things. If you see that there's like three mages and a warlock or whatever standing, putting on an engineering trinket that absorbs frost damage is amazing. Engineering is a must. I cannot stress this enough. Engineering, engineering, engineering. Have one healer in each packet. PvP is like most other things in life. When you do it a lot, you get better. Trying to explain how to play is not something I'm able to do on these pages, but I'll give you a few pointers, right? So, as a warrior, be verbal and communicate. Never charge into an intercept. This makes you vulnerable. What I mean is don't charge an enemy and then when they run away, you intercept them. Suddenly, you're outreached, you're, you, you overextended your healers, and you're dead. I save intercept for when I want to go back or I want to help someone, right? This is the last thing that I use, and it's amazing to get out of trouble. Warriors have very few shit abilities. Use gadgets and potions to your disposal. Play the game. The more hours you put in, chances are you'll get better. Right? And like I always say, personally, I don't like to duel. It's not PvP, and like in real life, a fight isn't a countdown with cooldowns. It's when you're not ready and without rules, as dirty as possible, to the death. The race begins. Use any gear you want. If you get global, you pick the wrong items. This is the mentality you should have when you're going into a raid. As a tank, especially. This is a list of uh, the bosses and uh, some special things you need to consider when you're fighting special bosses. Uh, nothing super sexy, but you know, something to keep in mind best in slot items again so phase two right the release of dire mall and world bosses outdoor bosses add even more potential to the horde versus alliance but what most fail to understand is that even more, the fight between guilds on the same faction becomes a huge factor. Example on things that drops from these bosses that might not look that super good, but when you do the math, they become insane. Like the famous Empyrean Demolisher.
you can just look at the map to the right and you see that this is an insane weapon that goes from 2.8 seconds to 1.71 crazy pvp rewards in phase two as well as a pvp -er, you should always carry an arsenal of trinkets consumables gadgets bandages and pocket mirrors the pvp trinkets are different for all the classes know your enemies and use yours wisely as you earn more and more honor your progress through the ranks and earn better and better rewards some ranks give you an item others gear but among the most appealing rewards the mounts you don't need reputation for these mounts no matter faction you can now be the proud owner of a war raptor a ram or a tiger if it's like vanilla uh, there's a guy selling these things uh, in stormwind and in orgrimmar and once you reach rank six you can now enter the officers uh, barracks I would give you a couple of tips to make it easier uh, before the game starts or the, the rewards are released try to think ahead and just come to peace with what you're aiming for right determine your ambition before the PvP reward system is released it requires dedication and real-life sacrifices and don't kid yourself the higher the ranks, the more the game will require from you. This is uh, some of the things that uh, the game will take from you. Less sleep, less exercise, unhealthy food because let's face it, you don't have time to do all these things to get perfect food and healthy. And, you know, friends and family are going to be a non-existent and health issues will probably evolve uh, when you're reaching like the last uh, couple of ranks and you're sleeping less and less and here's a couple of tips how to avoid some of the consequences before you start have a couple of rules set in stone food plan prepare every day prepare your food everything that you're going to eat this day have it made so you can just warm it up heat it up i don't know so you can you don't have to spend like one hour to cook something or put some fucking pizza slice in the oven every day for three months not good move around have a schedule to move around i don't know every hour every 30 minutes i don't care do it exercise Personally, every time I ding, I'm going to do 10 push-ups, 20 air squats, and 2 pull-ups. A sleep plan. At least get this many hours every day. Like, I'm going to get, after the first 48 hours, I'm going to get 6 hours of sleep every day. Visit a friend go to the family dinner have fun only doing things because it's rewarding won't you know last long term and having fun makes everything much easier the final chapter deeper knowledge on how to go through the ranks brackets or just questions on how to be the best you can be join serana's discord community everything you ever wanted to know this guy explains the brackets and the ranking and all that stuff so you can pretty much get an idea of what you're deep in, uh, diving into and also you can see the the rewards here and uh, even more detail into the different BGs Warsong Gosh 
one of the first PGs to be released. Uh, to just talk about a few things, Warsong is the smallest map in the game, but one of the most frustrating BGs to play. Uh, it's uh, small, fast, but it can take like indefinitely uh, because there's no time frame where you just have to cap the flags and if neither of you are capping flags you're not going to leave the game so there's 10 players there's a pretty much set tactic on how to win which makes it easy to predict use force when stronger use brains when weaker best team does not always win the smartest team wins Altric Valley also released with the Warsong Gold uh, first of the BGs uh, the BG we all have to run through and get exalted with because there's a couple of items that's crazy nice you have the ring and then there's a couple of weapons and you can buy potions and whatever yeah 40 player instance uh, or BG uh, some pointers don't expect others to win for you the objective is always to win there's amazing epics for warriors and uh, to keep in mind 10 players working together can beat 40 players that's not A rapid Basin. Great Mages. This is uh, the last uh, BG to be released. It's released uh, at uh, a later phase. But uh, yeah, one of the fastest. This is probably the fastest BG if you're in a super nice pre made. And uh, yeah. We're now we're talking down to five minutes per game, even four minutes. Great mages can be key to win this BG. Know how the map works, outsmart your enemies, and playmakers are important in this BG. Learn to be adaptable fast or lose and die trying. In this BG, there's a 15 player cap. Uh, what not to do is don't be predictable being predictable make your enemies uh, or give them the opportunity to always be ahead of you there's five bases and first to get 2000 points wins rank 12 all right so we're finally there most warriors will either go for rank 12 or rank 14 this is because the value for your buck is not that high on rank 13. Uh, yeah, sure, you get best in slot shoulders for a while, but you have to remember that this is how they look when they're upgraded, which is really late in the game. So going into AQ 40, the shoulders will be upgraded but you can at the same time obtain those uh, best in slot shoulders which, which are actually better from AQ40 the tier 2.5 than the rank 13 field marshal gear but anyway rank 12 is a very nice title and uh, the legs are best in slot for a long time they don't get replaced until you know situational in Nax Ramas and uh, Titanic legging so so if you decide to go to rank 13 here's the shoulders and you can see why they are really sought after with the improved hit chance the, the head is really nice with the crazy stamina and the chest is also amazing with that high amount of stamina but one thing that is not commonly known or I don't know it's probably known but you have to think about 
when you look at this gear, just look at the armor. It's almost as high as tier three, which means that the amount of stamina you get from this gear combined with the armor makes this gear insane. It's great for survival tanking. It's great for threat per second. Don't undervalue heading for ranks, even if you're a tank. You can use this gear for a long time. And some tanks I know actually use two pieces, uh, even going into max. Because you have the two set bonus as well, giving you an extra 200 health. You can mess around, you can use the, the feet or the, you know, whatever you lack in your original tanking gear. This is what you need when you have six pieces. It's obviously easier to, to swap around. And then you have the absolute legendary status in vanilla pvp the grand marshal or the high warlord title one of world of warcraft's most rewarding and remembered titles ever all the weapons you can ever have wet dreams about are yours for the taking i do not have them posted here because you can look them up and some things are just better left to be sought after. BWL, Warsong Gulch and Outrick Valley, Phase 3. Here's the bosses in BWL. I once again marked the bosses and put notes so you can kind of understand once you're progressing things that you need to think about and whatever requires special kind of gear once again some of this will be updated once uh, this patch is released or this phase is entered and uh, we are focusing on what's real when the game launches most most in this guide and as i said this guide is a work in progress and will get updated that's why it's a, a two-part series and the next part will involve these uh, best in slot gear and more detail dps as non-human dwarf and orc and also you see there's a mix here with the with the PvP gear. Release of Warzone Gulch and Outrack Valley creates a new meta. Because before these BGs were released, World PvP was the only form of PvP that existed in World of Warcraft. Now it remains to be seen what the new meta will be in classic because of the knowledge that we acquired during all these years and also the fact that we're entering the game with cross realm battlegrounds Sulgurub are at the basin and the green dragons phase four Sulgurub just like Sulfurak, it counts as an outdoor zone and riding on mounts is possible. Sulgurub is the capital of the jungle troll tribes led by the Gurubashi, the worshippers of the blood god Hakar the Soul Flayer. There's a lot of blue gear that doesn't look sexy, but it's actually insanely great. Blue gear in Sulgurub is kind of like epics. Dragons of Nightmare. So, all these dragons have specific loot tables, right? But they also have shared loot tables. That means that uh, every dragon that you kill, one of these items will drop, okay? 
So once again, there's a link to each of those dragons you can see. And uh, yeah, Gates of Ankirai, phase five. So unlike any other raid during Vanilla WoW, AQ40 is a massive instance, right? The size is crazy. Blizzard made it possible for us to reduce travel time by being able to mount up inside so of course you have Sugurub and Sulfurak already where you can actually mount but this is an indoor raid okay so not to make it too easy they added a feature we need specific mounts only usable and which only drops from trash mobs inside the gates of the temple of Ankirai they come in the colors of red, yellow, blue, and green, visible to the right. And for one among us lies a legendary gift that allows this chosen hero to be rewarded beyond imagination. The Black Kiraji Mount. Scarab Lord. An old friend, rank 14 warrior from Nostarius, produced three guides uh, for AQ40. They are very amusing to watch. You learn a lot. And uh, you have to realize that at the point in time when these guys were created by, by him, there were no actual, uh, you know, really fe real feedback or guilds that had clear AQ40 on any private server. Uh, except for uh, uh, like uh, one guild on uh, Emerald Dream but uh, that AQ was released in a hurry and nobody knows if the data were accurate but these guys are based on uh, all the knowledge he had then and if you watch them you can still learn a lot and obviously he put in a lot of time into these and they are truly well made AQ20. So the bosses here have pretty easy, easy mechanics. There's one guy, the last uh, boss, Osirian, the Unscarred, which can be a troublemaker. But it's a fun fight, and uh, Blizzard kind of try to make these uh, raids uh, amusing and not like anything we ever encountered before. Because we're probably most used to dragons by now and and the uh, cleave mechanics and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, I hope you enjoy AQ40 and AQ20 when when it's released, and I hope you give it a try because some things that we never encountered before is that trash is truly the most painful in the in the raids and the most time consuming. Once again, you have the gear changes, and this will be updated later on to a more perfect cup of tea. Here are the bosses, and you can see some are optional. And then, next Ramas, the final chapter. There are four different quarters and then you have the final the lair of saffron who guards Keltusad. this is a long long way ahead for most of us and uh, i look forward to uh, seeing how how this turns out compared to uh, private servers but yeah max ramas is uh, really really cool gear for warriors and uh, if you are one of the most active warriors you'll be rewarded come max ramas all right so thank you very much for taking the time to watch through this whole guide it's been fun it's been a lot of work but uh 
remember that this is my opinion this is some stuff that i based all the data i had uh, at the time on and there might be some things that gets uh, updated when uh, we enter classic and we actually learn more but uh take it for what it is it's it's a game this guide is uh, mostly for your amusement and uh, to kill some time before classic hits and hopefully to kill time for a lot of people in the future um, i'm happy to do it i enjoyed a lot of it i played a warrior for a long long time and uh, it's uh, it's a passion and the warrior is uh, most certainly a special kind of breed of people who, who want to excel at the game and be all you can be but uh thank you for hanging out i'm takanashi peace